and I'm gonna go to the plus button up top and let's make an invoice. And so I'm just gonna type in Eric Music, Eric, Eric Music and tab. And then, so now we have these items pulling over for for uh, the billable items. So let's let's pull them both in. Let's add all of them, add all. And so then I'm gonna close this out. And so let's go through tapping through it. I'm not gonna add an email address. We've got the send, the terms, the, let's go to the date. Let's make the date the 23rd plus button, plus button 123, number, location, and then everything else is populating like we've seen in a prior invoice. It's just populating now, pulling over from that billable item. Now, the tricky thing is that you can see it's kind of linked over here. That link indicates that it pulled in from a billable item. It looks like it's pulling in the item perfectly. But if I go down here, notice if I type in an ELP again, then you can see the ELP is actually $500, not the $400. Now, if you've worked with the desktop version, the desktop version actually somehow does it the way you would hope, right? It, it actually changes the rate to the sales price using, using the sales item typically, I believe, where it's not doing it here. So you could use this kind of billable item but then you might want to then, then you'd have to check down here and say, okay, the ELP should be $500 and then I would change it to $500. And I believe everything else will still populate properly uh, if you do that. But it's a, it's kind of annoying that it puts in the four. And then here, I'm gonna do the same thing with the, the e, uh, P -S -E -P -S -H it is. So an EPSH. Uh, is $400. So this one, I'm going to change the rate to 400. So, and then I'm just going to delete this bottom item. So you can see what I did there. I, I pulled them in, but then I'm going to double check that they're actually doing the right rate because that billable item pulls in the cost, which is typically how that billable function works because you usually use it when you pay for like gas or, or, materials or something like that so that the materials will then populate over into the invoice as just the amount that you paid for it plus you might add a markup if you were doing like a construction process project for example everything you paid for you can then say when i paid for it i'm going to pull it into the invoice and at cost but we don't want to pull it into the invoice at cost here we want it to use the items to make it the sales price so it gets a little wonky on that you got to be really careful with that tool so there is that. So everything else is an invoice. So I'm gonna go down here and change this to the 5% for our generic problem, which you could do here, or you can change the math if you wanna follow along with our generic problem for the sales tax. And so there it is. So what's this gonna do? It's an invoice now. So it's gonna increase the accounts receivable for the full amount, 30,450. The other side's gonna to go to the sales driven, you would think, you know, by the items, but it would be the 29, a uh, thousand that we charged and then sales tax payable is going up a liability 1450 and then the inventory is going to go down by the amounts driven by the items hopefully and then the other side is going to go to cost of goods sold the net impact on net income is the sales price minus the cost of goods sold we also have the sub ledger for accounts receivable will be impacted tracking the fact that eric music is the one that owes us the money and we're going to try to collect on that and then the inventory sub ledger is also going to go down by units hopefully as well driven by these items let's check it out and double check that that is indeed the case let's save it and close it save it and close it and then we're going to go to the tab to the right we're going to run it to refresh it because we only work with fresh stuff here. No, no old moldy reports. And then in the accounts receivable, going into the A to the R, going into the A to the R, we've got the invoice here. That looks good. 30,450, 30,450. That's the total down below. So that's the total. Okay. Go back up top, X out of that, scroll up back to our report. Then I'm going to go to the profit and loss, run it to refresh it, and then drill it into the cost of goods sold. I'm sorry, let's go to the sales side first. I'm kind of curious to go to the cost of goods sold. I want to get there first, but no sales. Sales first. So there's our invoice with the two line items, the 25000 the 4000 
doesn't include the sales tax, just as we would expect, closing that back out, scrolling up, back to the report, back to the middle, back to the report, and then back to the middle tab, and then we want the liabilities. There it is in our sales tax payable for that department because we're going to pay California department and so on. There's the there's the uh, sales tax, which looks correct. Okay, that's a lot of sales tax. Woo! And scrolling up and we're going to go back. And then we also have the inventory. If I go into the inventory, it's gone down. Inventory is the asset. It's going down with an invoice because we sold the inventory. So there's the amount for the invoice, uh, 1006. So you've got these dollar amounts, separate line items because of the, but it's being driven hopefully by the units of inventory that's being, that are being decreased hereby. So if I go into that, those amounts aren't on the actual form, but it's using the, the items hopefully to be decreasing the inventory because we use that billable thing uh, to do it. Notice there's, this invoice is 1006 with two lines and I have I have uh, four lines here. Now that I believe that's because QuickBooks is using a, a flow assumption of first in first out. So that means when they when they re remove the inventory they have to do it in alignment with what the layers of the flow assumption. Even though we haven't changed the price of anything, I think they're tying it out kind of like to when we purchased it. So that why so that can be a little confusing. Uh, at first, but I believe that's the rationale for it. Going back and then tab to the right and the profit or the cost of goods sold here. So there's the cost of goods sold for this side. The net impact on the AR on the income statement is the revenue minus the cost of goods sold. And it did put the revenue into the sale of product revenue, right? Which is what we would expect driven by the item that's what the item would typically tell it to go to so that looks good it didn't put it into like a random revenue account uh for for the billable item it's just that dollar amount thing that's a little weird so if i go back to the first tab and the ar the sub we should have a sub ledger breaking out by cus by customer so if i go to the tab to the right right click on it and duplicate it so we can see that sub ledger and we're going to go to the reports and let's close up the boogie and scroll down who owes you let's look at the ar aging summary report and check that out as of the end of the year 12 31 2 3 2 3 run it to refresh it and so we've got the agings but i'm just looking at the three customers that add up to the 38 671 50 that should tie out to what's here 38 671 50 we can also track that internally to try to collect on it as we saw with the invoices before in the sales tab, like the customer tab, and then in the customers, which if you were in the business view, by the way, would be in the, the get paid and paid area. And in the get paid, you got your customer tab here. So there we have it. And then you can find, uh, you can find the customer or I can sort up top by the open invoices and then it'll give us a list of customers with the open invoices.